Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Chuquan, and today I wanna to show you how to build your first Power BI report. In this video, we will walk through the process of connecting our data in the Power BI desktop, shaping and cleansing the data in the Power Query editor before loading it into the desktop to build out our data model. Then we will add the data to a few report visuals before publishing to the Power BI service where we can collaborate with others. We are gonna build a simple report using public data from the web to help us answer some questions regarding regarding failed banks in the United States from 2000 to today. Let's get started. To get the Power BI desktop application, you can head over to the Microsoft Download Center where you can then select the download button. You can also search for the Microsoft Store and then search in the app section for the Power BI desktop application. There are a couple of Power BI options, including the Power BI Report Builder, so make sure to select the Power BI desktop. For today's demonstration, we will connect to some public data found at data.gov on failed banks that have been reported to the FDIC. Once you have downloaded and installed the Power BI desktop application, you will go ahead and select blank report to begin building out your Power BI report. Now in the ribbon at the top, you can see there are a few data source connectors to choose from. We can choose to connect to the data by clicking to download the CSV, or we can right click the download button and select copy link. This will make it easier to to update the report with new data after a report refresh. Now, back in the Power BI desktop, in the Home tab, we can select from the dropdown to choose our data source connector. If you do not see the option you are looking for, click the dropdown and select More for a full list of data source connectors. From here, we are going to select the web connector since we are connecting to a web link. We will then go ahead and paste in that link that we copied from the web page. We will then click OK and we will be brought to a preview of our data. After connecting to a web data source in the Power BI desktop, an authentication screen may appear where users can choose their preferred authentication method. If you are connecting into a database, you may see this as well as it would be necessary to provide those credentials to securely access the data. Power BI now auto detects it as UTF-8, which is an industry standard, but not the correct option for this data set and is the source of the null question mark characters. We can change this to the last option here, Western European Windows, and we will be good to go. Now, here we are ready to choose whether we want to load the data, which will import the data directly into your Power BI report as is, while Transform Data opens the Power Query Editor, allowing you to clean, shape, and refine the data before loading it into your Power BI report. This lets you work with the raw data immediately and then begin preparing it to better meet your analysis needs. As a best practice, it is important to adopt good naming conventions for your tables and columns that are easy for users to understand. Let's rename this query to failed banks. Now there's a few ways that we can remove columns here in the Power Query Editor. One of the easiest and best way to remove those columns is by selecting choose columns from the ribbon. This will open a new dialog box that allows you to uncheck the columns that you don't need for this particular report. Once you've removed the columns you no longer need, go ahead and click OK. Notice there is now a new step that has been added to our applied steps over here on the right hand side. You can go in and delete any step or modify that step if you have possibly done it by mistake. In addition to removing columns that you do not need, you can easily add new columns in a few ways. If we go up to the Add Column tab, we will find a feature known as Column from Examples. Column from Examples allows you to provide a sample value and it will populate that column with the new sample you provided. We will go ahead and create a new column that is going to be a combination of city and state. So here in the first row, we are going to type in the city and state abbreviation, then hit enter. We will now see a new column appear populated with all of the city and states for our entire data set. We can go ahead here and rename this column right within this step as the this is a good best practice as well so that we don't add any unnecessary steps. Let's go up to the home tab where we can then select close and apply. Close and apply is going to save any of the changes you have made to this model while applying it to all rows within your data model. Now that our data is loaded here into the Power BI desktop, in the data pane, you can see our failed banks table and all of the columns in the failed banks table listed alphabetically. Now we can also see something here on this closing date column. We can see 
see that a date hierarchy has been automatically added. By default, Power BI will add a date hierarchy to any column that is marked as a date column and stored as a date data type in Power BI. Now, it is a really good idea for us to enhance our model by adding an additional table to this model. To do this, we are going to use a language known as DAX. So let's head over to the table view to create that new table. Here in the table view, you can get a preview of the tables within your model as well as the columns. Let's go ahead and select new table from the ribbon to begin building out our new table. Now, using the DAX language, first let's discuss what is DAX. DAX is the data analysis expression language, and we can use DAX to create new columns, new tables, and new measures within our data models to enhance the reporting and the data insights that we can provide in this report. So we can use DAX to create a new date table, and we can do this over here in the table view on the left hand side. Now, a date table is crucial in a Power BI data model because it provides a structured way to handle our date based analysis and allows us to use time intelligence in our model. With a dedicated date table, we can filter by different dates across the data model, including on other tables other than the failed banks table, if we decide to connect more dimension tables later, like maybe a bank members table. We can go ahead and provide a name to our date table here known as calendar. Now we can use within DAX a function known as calendar auto. Calendar auto will create a single column date table containing a start date and end date based on the dates in our data. As the report refreshes and any new banks are added to the failed banks table, if it needs to add new dates, it will do so upon refresh. We can finish this expression with a closing parentheses and hit enter. And here we will see a new table has been created here in the data pane with a single column. And you can see that date hierarchy has also been added here as well. Now that we've added this new table, it is really important that we create a relationship between our date table and our failed banks table so that these two tables are able to talk to each other. Let's head over to our model view in order to create this relationship. Here we can see our failed banks table here on the left and our calendar table on the right. Now, when you are ready to create that relationship, you want to find some commonality between your two tables. You can drag the closing date column from the failed banks table and drop it right onto the date column of the calendar table. You can also drag date from the calendar table and drop it on top of closing date. A new window will appear where you will validate your columns that you have mapped in your relationship. And you can also see that it is automatically detected our cardinality here, which is showing as many to one. What this many to one cardinality is telling us is that there are multiple instances of these dates on the many side of the relationship, which is our failed bank side. And there is only a single occurrence of each of these dates on the calendar side, on the single side of our table relationship. We can go ahead and click save to create this relationship. And now we can see Power BI has created that relationship for us. Let's head back to the report view here now to create some visualizations and to begin building out our report. Here in the report view, we can begin building out our report. On the right hand side of the report view, you can find your visualizations pane. You can see there are over 30 different visualizations to choose from. I would like to know which state has the most failed banks. For this, I think a bar chart would be good to use as bar charts are great to compare categories of data. So in the bar chart, I'm going to go ahead and add in the bank name column and the states. Now, dragging and dropping doesn't always give you the result that you want. For this, we can go up to our visualizations pane and drag the fields into the specific places that we want them. Now I can clearly see that Georgia is the state with the most failed bakes according to my data set. Now that we've created a bar chart, I would like to add one more visualization to our report since we have some geographic and location data. From the visualization pane, there are a couple of maps to choose from. I will go ahead and select the standard map visualization. Now with this standard map, I'm going to pull into this map the city state column that we created using our column from examples feature. When I first pull in the city state column, it appears as if there is only one city with failed banks. However, I know that that is not correct as I can see there are many other states and many other city states where there are failed banks. So this is not rendering correctly. We 
we have to help Power BI out. In order to get your locations and geographic columns to display correctly on your map visuals, you will need to modify column properties known as the data category. You can open the column properties by selecting and highlighting the name of a column to open up the column tools menu. Here, you will find the data category that you can modify. There are a few different options to choose from, but the one that suits our column best is going to be place. However, in addition to modifying the data category or location fields, you can also modify it here for URL data. Let's go ahead and select place. Now we can see our report map is showing all of these different data points. We can click these data points and see that it is going to update and cross filter over here on the bar chart. I can select a bar on the bar chart as well, and it's going to cross filter on my map visual. We are now ready to publish our simple report to the Power BI service to share with others. When you are ready, you can go up to the ribbon and select publish. You will be prompted to save your Power BI report. If you have not already given it a name, go ahead, give it a name and click save. This will be then prompting the window where you can select your workspace from. I'm going to go ahead and select a workspace that I created for this here and click select. In just a moment, you will see a hyperlink that you can click when the report has been successfully published to the Power BI service. When we click open, this will open our report in the Power BI service. Here in the Power BI service, we can see our report just as we did in the desktop. The functionality is the same with our cross filtering and cross highlighting as we go through and select different states and data points. Here from the Power BI service, I can choose to save a copy of this report to another workspace. I can download this file. I can also embed this report in other places that I've been granted by my Power BI administrator. I can choose to share directly to this report where I can choose to share it with people in my organization or specific people where they will get a link that is emailed to them and they can bookmark in their browser. I could also head over to the workspace where I can add other users who can then collaborate with me on this report and semantic model here from the Power BI service. In order to share reports with others, you must at least have a Power BI Pro license. If you are already a Power BI Pro, what advice would you give a beginner? Leave a comment below. If you are looking for more in-depth training on Power BI, then be sure to check out our full three and a half hour Power BI Beginner to Pro course found here. Create a free community plan to view the complete recording of the dashboard in a day where we cover each of the Power BI report development phases in detail with instruction and hands-on labs. The free trial will also give you access to all of our in a day content like Copilot Studio, App in a Day, and more. Like our teaching style and want more specific Power BI training on topics such as data modeling and DAX, then sign up for an on-demand learning subscription using my code prag.works forward slash Angelica40, which will be in the description below. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.